Champaign County Agriculture Today with your host, Dennis Riggs. Hello and welcome to Champaign County Agriculture Today. My name is Dennis Riggs, your host for the program, and today we have a very moving program for you. Yes, I know our guests are just dying because they knew I was going to use some kind of comment. We're going to talk about dairy today. Good heavens, dairy touches our lives in so many different ways. Milk, cheese, uh, ice cream, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. And it's all a very wholesome product. And that's what we're going to focus on today is dairy, uh, why it's important for Illinois and why it's important for you as a consumer and how you can make better use of that. Two excellent program guests today. We have Jennifer and Jim that are here on our program today. I'm going to let you guys do the introduction. Uh, Jim, I'll start out with you. Sure. Uh, Jim, with the Illinois Farm Bureau, tell mm -hmm. us uh, what you do over there for the Farm Bureau. Well, I'm the Livestock Program Director, but I also manage the Illinois Milk Producers Association, which is uh, a group of, of uh, processors and cooperatives represent about 80% of the milk marketed in Illinois. You know, a lot of times we don't think of uh, Illinois as being a big milk state. Mm -hmm. Is it? We have, uh, it is a, a state that has a significant uh, dairy population, about 102,000 cows with about 1,000 dairy farmers. But uh, we rank 20th in, this, in the uh, country as far as uh, states that produce dairy. But it's a, it's a big processing state. In other words, we have milk come in from all over the country, including New Mexico, come into Illinois for processing into cheese and fluid milk products and, uh, you know, cottage cheeses different, uh, all kinds of different products. All right. Jennifer, we're so glad to have you today. Uh, uh, give us a, a little background where you're from. Uh, did you grow up on a farm or anything? And then who you work for? Well, I grew up in Urbana, so I grew up near the South Farms of the University. So, go. of course, there were the dairy dairy farms out there, the dairy farm. And uh, now I work for the St. Louis District Dairy Council, and my office is based in Peoria, but I service uh, uh, the Champaign area as well. So I'm glad to be here today. And uh, But the Dairy Council, we're funded through uh, the dairy farmer checkoff dollars and what we do is help to promote and educate people about the importance of including dairy in their diets. We also do a lot of work with schools making sure uh, kids are learning the right things about dairy and also being offered uh, fun dairy foods such as a variety of flavors of milk in the school school meal program. And I just can't wait. You've brought some show and tell here today and I understand there's some goodies in here so there I'm are. anxious to get to those here pretty soon. Jim, maybe we can uh, check this out and I'm see what's sure going on. <laughs> well, let's talk about dairy production. Sure. And, and let's let's start off by showing a slide, our slide number one here, and that this is the this is the girl that makes it all happen. You bet. Uh, we are looking at on slide number one here. Uh, who is this? Is this Betsy or who is this? Yes, uh, that's a that's a good cow name. You know, Betty, Daisy, Betsy. Those are good cow names. But uh, what you see is a very good looking Holstein dairy cow. That probably makes up about ninety five percent of the cows in the state of Illinois. Is that black and white female and and uh, when you see her come into mm -hmm. a herd, usually she is a two-year-old, and that's when you want her to have her first calf. And once she has that first calf, then she can start milking. So a cow has to have a calf every year to continue milking. And that's, that's so much different than, than beef cattle and uh, ornamental cows, I guess you could say, uh, is the fact that the dairy cattle have to be managed as far as their production of the product. Definitely. And... and uh, Cows like routine. Mm -hmm. They like the same people milking them. They like the same environment in the milking parlor. Uh, Let, let's show that. We're going to go to slide sure. number four here. And what you've got here mm -hmm. is a, an excellent slide that talks about what's going on. And uh, you might tell us what these two slides are showing. Sure. The are, slide showing. And the one on the, the left there is just showing cows entering the milking parlor, uh, standing in line, waiting to be milked. Some of them look like they are being milked. Uh, and the person on the right is actually placing some uh, milking units on cows. And, uh, you know, that's where it all starts. That's where it begins. And the cows are usually milked two or three times every day mm -hmm. to uh, produce milk uh, for the consumer. Well, you know, that's something we don't think of. We think, especially here in Illinois, we think of corn and soybeans, a lot mm -hmm. of the crops. But we're going to slow, show our next slide here. And this shows the top five uh, agricultural commodities uh, as bases our latest information in 2007. Look, dairy is right there. Is this in order, Jim? Yeah, that what that is some information is it's the top five uh, commodities produced 
in uh, 2007 in the United States and corn and soybeans far and away, especially here in Champaign County are very important. Here in the Midwest, about two thirds of all corn goes to ultimately to feed livestock. And then you'll see uh, probably virtually all the soybeans one way or another end up it, uh, going through livestock prior to uh, uh, it being used. So it's ground up into soybean meal, that sort of thing. But about 95% of the soybeans produced right, right around here go to feed livestock. I think that's an important point. As our consumers are watching our program here today, as they drive from one town to another, up to Peoria, let's say, and back and forth, uh, they see all this crop land. And they mm -hmm. think, well, what's all these crops used for? Do we really uh, use it as a soybean meal, as the product that it is actually grown? And it actually is the feed for livestock. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing how our livestock industry has changed over the years. For example, in 1930s, in the, in the 30s, everybody had, you know, two or three cows on their farm because they needed the milk to be produced for their family. They didn't have good refrigeration units, marketing systems weren't set up very well. So in, in the 30s, Illinois was the milk capital of the world. And uh, you, you would see uh, something like 1.2 million dairy cows in our state. Today, we're 102,000 dairy cows. So just to show you how times have changed, uh, it's, it's really very typical, the, the larger and fewer farms, uh, the consolidation that we've seen. But those ones we have left are working extra hard and round the clock to produce very that good so. milk. Well, let's talk about the products. Jennifer, um, there's a lot of good things that come from milk, and we're going to bring up slide number five here and take a look at that uh, and give us a little bit of an idea of some of these products and, and what they are, and do these actually come from a cow? <laughs> they do come from a cow. A cow, of course, creates uh, the delicious uh, dairy products that we see in the grocery store, and there's quite a variety out there. When you look at milk, there's a lot of varieties of uh, flavored milk available. Oh, flavored we're getting milk, into the goodie bag now. That's right. Oh, it good. the same uh, nine key nutrients nutrients as uh, regular milk does. You're getting a lot of nutrition no matter which milk you choose. And of course, kids prefer the taste. They drink more milk when they drink that flavored I, milk. A question about that. Parents say, well, this is strawberry flavored milk. It can't be as good as the real thing. Is that the case? That No, that, that is the case. It is just as good. Just as just good, as okay. Good. So uh -huh. not the case. It's just as good. And actually, kids who drink flavored milk drink more milk. And flavored milk only provides about 2% of the added sugar in a child's diet. And what is shown is uh, what the dietary guidelines show is when you add a little flavoring to nutrient uh, rich foods such as milk, you'll tend to consume more. And when we're looking at uh, dairy foods, they also provide those nutrients that are lacking in our diets, um, such as for kids, it's calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Those are three of the five nutrients the dietary guidelines identify as low. And then for adults, it provides four of the seven nutrients mm -hmm. that the dietary guidelines tell us that we need to get more of. So very important, make sure you're including nutrient-rich dairy foods in your diet. And also what the dietary guidelines note is that people who consume dairy foods have better overall quality diets, consume more nutrients, and also have overall uh, better bone health. So very important to consume the recommended three servings. I gotta ask day. you my, my personal question. I have a glass of milk and a couple of cookies before I go to bed. Is that a good thing? <laughs> and that is a good thing. Good, so I'm gonna keep it up then. Your three servings of dairy in a day. And there's also some fun uh, products for kids. There's a fizzy yogurt, which are great in the summertime. You can put them in the freezer. Uh, pack them in a cooler bag to go. All the products I brought in today are just grab-and-go products. They make the smaller containers of the flavored milk too, which you can pack. And then if you look at the yogurt, uh, this is one geared towards kid, a yogurt drink, and it has, um, it's called omega-3s, fatty acids added, and that's to help with uh, brain development and also visual function. And they'll have those also added Towards, geared towards adult products such as yogurt smoothies and cheeses with omega-3s added. Jennifer, can you give me a just a real basic definition of the difference between yogurt, what yogurt is compared to milk? Well, yogurt has um, the live active cultures added to it, so it, it makes it a little bit more thicker. Um, and then so, the, and those live active cultures also have benefits to us as far as um, for your digestive health as well, mm -hmm. digestive and immune function. So it's a, it's a dairy product, it just like with cheese, has different agents add, added to it to make it, of course, the, the harder aged, aged cheese. So, Oh, good important. old cheese, that's yeah. right. And this cheese actually has um, the uh, probiotics added to it, which makes it oh, okay. um, uh, good for the immune function and the digestive health. 
Now, does that change the cost? Does that change the serving size? How does, when you add all the good stuff to it, how does that change it for the consumer? It doesn't, um, it, sometimes they'll be more expensive, but you always can find dairy products on sale mm -hmm. when, you, when you do find the things. And a lot of the times with the newer products, you will find good sales on those. You always look for the sales, and sometimes the price is going to be a little bit different because you're going to be paying for the, um, some of the added value. But with dairy, no matter what you choose, there's always one there out there to meet your uh, health and nutritional needs, and there's one uh, a product, a new one to try. And it's always good to try a new, new product, and you can balance it out with the rest of your your budget with what you're spending at the grocery store. Very good. Well, what a great assortment of products, new, exciting things. And Jim, I don't think the cows know what's going on with their milk once it leaves them at the farm. Uh, are they worried about that? Or my real question is, what are we doing on the farm to make sure that the product that we're producing out there is wholesome so that these products that are ultra right. wholesome are good for the consumer? What, what's the farmer doing? When a cow comes in to be milked, the, the first thing is is that, that udder is sterilized, usually through a, a wash system of iodine and physically wiping down that teat and udder. What that does is stimulate the udder to bring down the milk and so you can prepare her to receive the, uh, the uh, milk claw that, that comes up and starts pumping out the milk, the automated they milk. They call it a claw. I really, that's yeah. not a very good I name for I it. I shouldn't say that. But <laughs> it, it doesn't. The it attachment. very gently comes up and, and brings that uh, pro, that uh, uh, pulsation motion and milks that cow. Let's bring that picture right back up again because I want people to make sure that there's not a not a claw involved here. It doesn't here. snap there's, anything. Over there on the right-hand side, that's what the uh, the farmer's doing, right? Right. Yeah. And uh, what they'll do then is, is uh, take that milk, Wait till she's, it probably takes about 10 minutes, 15 mm -hmm. minutes to have her completely milked out. That milk is then pumped through a pipeline and uh, filtered and then immediately brought down to about 37 degrees. So you go from cow temperature that's about 103 down to uh, 100 or 37 degrees very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's stored for pickup here uh, later. Now, it is tested before it leaves the farm tested for antibiotics and it's tested on the truck, tested at the plant, all the way through the system. And of course it's pasteurized which kills bacteria and, and uh, uh, makes the milk have a longer shelf life. Um, it's homogenized and mixed and then ultimately sold to the consumer and, and milk is the most regulated product that a, cons that, a, that a farmer produces and the consumer buys. So it's, it's inspected at so many different points throughout the system that uh, it, you, know, you can be very rest assured that it is a very pro uh, safe and wholesome product and consumer confidence is very high when it comes to milk. The product itself, from the time that the milking is done on the farm until it's available in the store and mm -hmm. in our products, what's the approximate length of time? Is that a, a days, weeks, sure. months? It, uh, the milk that, that uh, we have in Illinois, we're very, very blessed because we have a strong cooperative system, dairy cooperatives, and uh, probably about 70%, 75% of the milk uh, that is sold in Illinois is sold as fluid milk. So, it, so it's a very quick turnaround time. So the milk that is picked off the farm that morning could be processed that day, bottled, and be in a store you know, within a day or two. Uh, so it is very fresh and long, uh, you know, a, a long shelf life. And you know, it doesn't take very long when you turn milk from the farm to the consumer. Well, one of the most important things, and Jennifer helped me out here, is refrigeration. We can, we can tell this milk product has been cooled down, quickly processed, and that's why we better... Oh, you got one more thing in there. So we have, we have any more... I was going to put it back to show folks that refrigeration is so important to keep the wholesomeness of this product and, of course, the shelf life up. That, that's right. And when you, the milk isn't refrigerated, of course, the quality uh, decreases. Mm 
So you definitely want to make sure you keep milk at the proper temperature. And uh, one of the ways you can do that, what I brought today were grab-and-go uh, dairy items. And this is great uh, to pack. Make sure to pack when you're headed out yep. to your summer insulated, festivities. Nice insulated, insulated pack. Insulated and pack it, of course, with ice and pack mm -hmm. the ice between. And also the individually packaged dairy foods are going to maintain their temperature better than if you're just placing a whole block of cheese. So these are great to grab and pack along with you. And when you are going to the grocery store, it is important, especially in the hot summer months, um, if you are going to have a delay before you get home or if maybe your home is for a little further away from the grocery store is make sure to bring along a cooler and pack your uh, cold dairy foods in there as well as uh, ice cream we had mentioned ice cream at the beginning and that's a favorite uh, summer treat and of course that's made uh, with wholesome milk so it ranks high on the nutrient ladder when you're ranking it to other desserts so good to pack the ice cream in a cooler too and make sure it stays frozen what's the proper temperature for storing milk well, you, 35 degrees or less is what it is uh, for the prime flavor. That's what you try to strive for, 35 degrees, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to storing milk and dairy products. Now, I'm going to hit you with a little slider here. Ice cream, however, at 35 degrees, <laughs> ice cream isn't ice cream anymore. Right. It thaws out. What about ice cream? What's the proper temperature for that? Well, of course, you want the ice cream to, to be frozen. So um, you definitely want to make sure you keep your ice cream at, at the frozen temperature. The, um, and I, my mind is slipping right now. Well, it's, it's down around five degrees <laughs> yeah, or so. It's, right. it's, 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 it's like way below degrees. freezing yeah. freezing. Correct. Uh, it's amazing. You can, you can actually pack ice cream with ice in a cooler and think I'm okay, but it will thaw out. It'll become milkshakey right. or go back to the, it'll still, still be fine, but it's not ice cream anymore. No, yeah, and that is true. When ice cream freezes and refreezes, it, it loses the quality yeah. and then the ice crystals can form. And a, a tip with ice cream to help prevent those ice crystals from forming is it's a good they used to package it. I don't notice it as much. There used to be a fine layer of, of like the plastic, but even if you put saran wrap over the ice cream and make sure when you are scooping it that you scoop it even, not dig into the ice cream container, which is... It's all about <laughs> surface area. How much surface, surface area? area. Good, so yeah. you definitely want it. And of course, once you serve your, yourself ice cream, put it back in the freezer right away. Right, yeah. We've all been to those wedding receptions and graduation parties where the poor uh, <laughs> tub of ice cream is sitting out there slowly turning into mush right. and there's a reason for that yes. so we're going to put these back inside here to keep Sounds these cool great. to show our folks today all right well, we've got some great ideas here and we're going to go to slide number six here in just a second because you brought uh, some good ideas of how we can use dairy and get our dairy three times a day let's start off here with our our first slide and to help me out Jennifer with what we're talking about here well, you want to start your day off with dairy, so uh, get a head start on the day and jump start your morning off with a nutrient-rich breakfast that includes dairy, uh, milk, yogurt, or cheese, as well as a whole grain item, such as whole grain cereal and fruit. And of course, the picture is showing one of the easiest ways to get it in is a bowl of cereal with milk and fruit. Um, and one of my favorite ways is a whole grain waffle topped with berry flavored yogurt and uh, berries. Now also, here's number two. Number two is to rethink your drink. You want to uh, make milk with meals a rule. Um, so for family meal time, always serve milk. And that means you as a parent or adult need to be drinking milk just like your children. Because when it comes to nutrition, not all beverages are created equal. You definitely want to be working in that milk. Now quick question I always think about, you see the 2%, 1% skim, you see the whole milk. How do I make that decision? It really is a, a matter of preference, and all milk is going to provide the same nine uh, key nutrients, it's just difference in fat. So, of course, with the skim and non-fat milk, that's going to, that provides zero grams of fat per serving, or with your 2% per 8 ounce, one cup is 5 grams of fat. So it's a difference of what, you, what your preference is, is Very what good. you're going to choose. Okay. Our next slide here talks about how we need to take a break with dairy. I you like do. this one. Well, we all get those the munchies around 3 p.m., so you definitely want to uh, take a break with dairy. And uh, if you have a sweet tooth, a great break would be a fruit and yogurt parfait, and that you simply make, make by layering yogurt with fruit and even adding in some cereal for a nice crunch. A whole grain cereal like Bran Flakes works great. Cheese and crackers is always a traditional snack, really quick, and one of my favorites. I always like to have uh, string cheese with the whole grain crackers. And also milk-based smoothies are great in the summertime when you're craving a milkshake. What you can do is mix milk, uh, chocolate milk with a frozen banana, 
or even strawberry milk with some frozen berries. And it's a cool, refreshing treat and a delicious way to get one of those three servings of dairy in. Fantastic. And, of course, there's a lot of retailers in the area that, as we see in the afternoon and evenings, the lines start forming, especially in the summertime, uh, where people are enjoying their dairy products. Uh, that's that's probably a good thing, isn't it? It, it is. It is. And, and unfortunately, in America, uh, we're actually Americans are behind in getting their dairy. Most Americans consume half the recommended three servings of dairy a day. What I talked about in the beginning, it's so important to get in man, because it's a marker of a healthy diet and it's a great way to get in your nutrients and it's beneficial to your health for bone health and also there's research showing that dairy helps to uh, lower the risk of high blood pressure. There's a lot of information about dairy. Maybe people don't talk about getting a gallon of milk and, and have it on their Frosted Flakes or whatever, uh, but there's a lot of work that milk producers themselves are doing. Jim, I know that the, the Milk Producers Hill Illinois fund some educational programs to let the information, the true information about dairy products be known. Tell us about what type of programs those are out there. Yeah, the dairy farmers in Illinois uh, collectively self-fund about two million dollars worth of programs every year and those are in the area of uh, hard sell advertising uh, nutri and nutrition education uh, and do a, do a little research as well so programs like Jennifer is involved in and nutrition education is very important to make sure that uh, they are uh, working very closely with consumers and educating consumers about the facts about dairy and making sure that the, they get good information about nutrition. Well, the and cool thing is, is that it's a great product. It's been proven years and years over, and the farmers are in the business of, of trying to let people know how good of a product it is. Bet. So Jet, what the work that Jennifer does is funded directly from Dairy Producer Investments. Very good. Well, let's talk about some of that work. I know you guys have got a new program you're got, you have going on in the schools to let the kids know what's going on. Our next slide shows the gymnasium with all kinds of activities happening. I want you to tell us about what's, what's happening well, here. Well, this is, was our uh, first annual uh, spring. It was our 2009 Dairy Fuelly Fuel Tour. And schools earned this by showing their commitment to wellness, and they had to qualify for it. And we had 50 schools apply for this and we were able to bring it to 30 of the 50. So what it is, is it turns a gymnasium into an interactive playground where kids have a hands-on experience, uh, learning about the important role dairy plays in a healthy diet. There's such events as a yogurt swirl where kids enter a, it's in the shape of a yogurt container, similar to a cash, cash machine and they learn to grab yogurt and that's here we go uh, let's just go to that right yeah, there it they're is grabbing that's fine items it's paper cash but what it, the message here is to grab yogurt and get healthy and there's a message sign right beside which you can't see which is teaching kind of reinforcing the message about the important role yogurt plays in a child's diet and then uh, to grab it and get healthy and then one of the ones the kids had the most fun on was a string cheese right there it is. that looks like fun and right and cheese is a great snack um, as we mentioned before great for that three people PM snack, but this is teaching kids. Kids are having fun. They kind of hooked up to bungee cords and they get a race against each other and see who get places the cheese the furthest. So have a slice of cheese in their hand. And also uh, one of the concepts is dairy is included in the dietary guidelines food groups to encourage. One of those foods we're supposed to be eating more of. And this is a food group to encourage climbing wall where kids get to uh, climb up to the top and they ring a cowbell. And uh, the message here, a hidden message is where they place their feet is on, on the foods that they need eat more of which includes dairy and someone did point out most of them are on dairy but that's true most of the footholds where the kids get to climb up to the top <laughs> well this is a tremendous idea uh, where was this school this particular program where was that located at you remember? well we did go we went to the schools in illinois we went to one in champaign the franklin middle school qualified mm -hmm. and there's actually about four that applied in champaign and we also went to uh, ridgeview and colfax some schools in the blue junior high schools in bloomington and mclean and then we also uh, went to a school in Peoria. Those are the ones in my area. And this was geared towards the middle school audience because at middle school age is where you see kids drop off a, in their dairy intake. Mm -hmm. And one of the eight crucial ages were their prime bone building years where we need to help to increase the intake. So we really targeted that age group because that's where we can see the most change. For our parents watching today, when that drop off occurs, what is the substitute? Do the kids go to well, soda pop? 
Right. Unfortunately, yeah. they do go to the competitive beverages, which is soda pop. And when kids are choosing soda, of course, there's a concern, no nutrients, and also they added sugar, which can lead to the kids, the childhood obesity epidemic. So that, I mean, we really want to make sure we're encouraging milk kids to get the nutrients, get the calcium in that they need, as well as the other bone building nutrients milk provides. And when you're looking at terms of calcium, nine out of 10 teenage girls and seven out of teenage 10 teenage boys fail to get the recommended amount of calcium they need in their diet. And dairy, of course, is a prime source uh, for calcium in the diet. So it's important that we encourage our kids to get the three servings of dairy in a day. And we did at the Dairy Fuel and Fuel uh, Tour also, we had a flavored milk station. And it was amazing to see kids sampling the flavored milk. There was cookies and cream served, strawberry, chocolate. And we had kids coming up for second, thirds, and fourths of the flavored milk. So make sure as a parent that you're making these choices available, especially now in the summer months to your kids. And there's so many fun dairy foods out there. Have you seen those straws where you, you buy the straw and you suck through the straw and it yeah. turns regular vanilla milk into banana? or right. ch- oh, Those are fantastic. They huh? are. And I have a, a – those are neat. And I have a, a – two-year-old son I always make sure he always requests chocolate milk please mom so I always he likes chocolate milk and graham crackers before he goes to bed so I keep even the powder or the the chocolate syrup just to add a little bit of flavoring or the flavored straws Uh and he definitely drinks more I see that firsthand when he's offered the flavored milk well since Jim's here and he's the farmer of the group um, does chocolate milk really come from brown cows no (laughs) <laughs> just water. I want to clear that up once and for all. It, uh, it is definitely, definitely not, not that way. Yeah. Okay, well, we always hear that. What is the difference between white and the black cows other than, than uh, the, their well, appearance? Well, you see the, like the, the white and black cow that we were showing earlier, they're known for milk production. I mean, they produce a lot of milk. But then you've got a Jersey breed, for example. It's a smaller frame cow, and they, they're known for producing uh, high butter fat, you know, and, and that's how producers are paid today now on components, protein, butter fat. And so Jersey breed is becoming very popular breed and at least including them in with your Holstein cows, we're seeing some, uh, even some crossbreeding going on, so. Do farmers have to be concerned about what the end product is as per the cows that they raise? Well, again, definitely. It's, it's how the producers are paid are on the components they produce, the protein, uh, the uh, butter fat, and uh, so that these uh, they want to produce as much as that as they can, so they'll look at breeds definitely to see which ones need to be included in their herds to make them the most money. Is that the most thing? Is that the main thing the farmers are doing as we look into the future for for dairy production from the farm, uh, or is there anything new on the horizon we can hit real quick? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, a lot of it is nutrition, managing the very very fine components of nutrition. What have you got in your hand there, Jim? Uh, if we have just a minute, we can go to some, some of the uh, feed that a dairy cow eats and uh, grown right here in Illinois. Uh-huh. So you've got the, one of the first one we could look at is, is ground corn. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's something that, that uh, is ground very okay, finely, very a lot good. of surface area, good digestion. Second uh, thing we can look at is again something grown very close here is hay chopped uh-huh. hay a third thing might be a protein supplement this could be uh, ddgs from an ethanol plant uh, or something even very odd in this last one Des, what would that be any well, idea it looks like uh, it came out of the seed of my grain truck that the mouse mouse had made a nest sure. it looked like cellulose it's a uh, cotton seed and that is uh, Oh, yeah. cotton seed. Okay. Kind of a right. kind of an interesting thing, but not used in the industry. But a dairy cow can use that to make milk. So. Fantastic. Well, today on our program, we've learned so much. How can they find out more about the work that the Dairy Council does? Is there a website? There is a website. You can visit our website, which is stldairycouncil.org. Or another one to help you get your three servings of dairy a day is threeaday.org, and that's the easy one to remember. Fantastic. We hope you'll get your three-a-day serving out there, and we'll hope you tune in again next time on Champaign County Agriculture Today. I'm Dennis Riggs. Thanks for listening. Champaign County Agriculture Today is brought to you by Champaign County Farm Bureau.